In this world, people have been able to attach machine parts to themselves to improve their bodies. These people are called humanoids. Ayaka is a housewife, whose son has been infected with some disease. The treatment will cost a lot, as these medical things often do. So, the people from the hospital offer her a chance to waive all her son's medical bills. In return, they will copy the neural network of her brain for their medical experiments. Her mother also tells her to go ahead with it, as they can now treat her son. Ayaka wonders to herself, why wasn't she more skeptical of this whole thing back then? 25 years later, in the near future, humanoids with parts of machinery inside them have become a normal thing in society. According to the things the news announcer is saying, it seems that there are entire laws protecting humanoids. A chef and his customer talk about how 1% of the entire population are now humanoids. The chef himself is one. As you can see, his pupils are horizontal. The customer says that he won't be sick ever again. But the chef replies that he will die if something happens to his head. The customer suggests that he can make a backup. But apparently making backups of one's brain is illegal. Ayaka's son, Hikaru, is now a doctor with his own clinic where he treats robots and humanoids. Hikaru also does illegal treatments in secret, earning himself the nickname Mogadit in the underworld. One day a kid comes to Hikaru's clinic to get an implant. The kid says that all his friends have implants and he's the last one to get it. For some reason, Hikaru does not seem impressed that people are so willing to combine their bodies with technology. However, the kid seems happy as he can do all sorts of cool stuff Iron Man style. He immediately calls his friends and tells them to put him in the group chat for the game they play. Hikaru thinks about how human bodies have been changing more and more due to machines. Just like PCs and smartphones, society has come to accept these implants. One day, Hikaru informs his secretary, Risa, that he has to see a client, but as Mogadit, meaning it's illegal underworld stuff. Risa becomes worried and urges him not to do anything dangerous. Hikaru takes his car, but his AI, Jay, wants to drive it. Hikaru becomes a little exasperated at Jay, saying that the world is becoming quite strange. He reaches his client, a husband whose wife is suffering from neurological issues. Even her hands are shaking. They put wires into her brain to see the issue, and Hikaru realizes that the wife's memories have been illegally duplicated and made into a backup by them. That's why they contacted him instead of contacting the hospital. Now, Hikaru is known for doing illegal treatments, but these duplicate memories the backup thing, seemed to affect him for some reason. He scolds the husband, saying that despite all the technologies he has implanted into himself, he is still stupid. Turns out, when they made a backup of the wife's memories, they accidentally introduced a virus into her system. The backup was made one week ago, so they have only two more weeks left before the virus takes over, and she's just a hollow shell. Hikaru says that they can use the backup if it is clean. Later. He is returning when he finds a little girl in his car. She's the daughter of the man and woman inside. She says that she's human and that she was adopted. Her pupils are round, so she really is a complete human. She says that about a month ago, her mother slipped on the stairs and hit her head real bad. So her father became nervous and decided to do the backup. He did it for his wife's sake, so the girl asks Hikaru not to be angry at him. She asks him why making backups is illegal. Hikaru says that in the Middle East, someone copied the personalities of a dead person and used that personality to conduct crimes over and over again. So making backups are illegal to protect the integrity of individual personalities and memories. The girl asks what'll happen to her mother. Hikaru replies that the backup is clean, so they can use it to prevent any damage. But her mother and father have taken some time to decide what to do. You see, once they put the backup into her brain, she will regain her memories. But is she still the same person? The husband wants to use the backup so that she will be treated. But the wife has some doubts. The girl also looks at the family photo and thinks the same thing. If they use the backup, her mother will live. But would that still make her the same person? Meanwhile, Hikaru thinks about what the girl said, about how her father did it for her mother. So, he goes to the prison. Turns out, his mother, Ayaka, is in there right now. Ayaka cheerfully talks about how she's been making sandals while in prison, and how she's been keeping up with the sports on TV. Hikaru only listens to her quietly while thinking about how his mother used to take care of him when he was sick and all. Then, Ayaka asks him a strange question. Are you still looking for me? Meanwhile, at the clinic, Risa is going through some old news and finds one about Ayaka 25 years ago. She copied her neural network, or rather her personality, and the news claims that it was for commercial reasons. So, Ayaka was arrested. The punishment for copying one's personality is 30 years in prison. 
Back at the client's home, the girl eats the breakfast that her mother made for her. The mother has tried something new by adding fresh cream to the scrambled eggs, which makes them fluffier. The girl really likes them. The father then says that it's time for the operation. On the way to Hikaru's clinic, the husband and wife sit by the ocean and think about their life together as a family. All those wonderful memories, it's not like she'll be losing those, so she should be fine. But the wife also points out that she'll forget everything from after the backup, like the warmth of his hands right now. The husband promises to hold her hands again, as many times as she wants. At the clinic, Risa says that she's against this particular operation. But Hikaru says that he has to do it for the family, and that he has already been paid. Also, he tried to find the origin of the backup device they used, but he couldn't find it. Risa wonders if it came from the black market. Then, Hikaru says that he'll handle this operation as he's not a humanoid, but a ruthless human. They begin the procedure, and at one point, Hikaru says that he'll have to format her brain. After all, in order to add the memories from the backup, her brain needs to be cleared. He is just about to go ahead with it, but the wife stops him. She starts crying as she knows that the backup is the only way. But the person she is right now is about to disappear just like that. And that scares her. And frankly, the idea of it scares me too. The procedure is canceled at her request. The family goes on living their lives like normal, while the wife thinks back to her life and all the happy memories she had with her husband and daughter. 14 days after Hikaru first met them, the virus caused her to lose all movements and she became a shell. A backup is conducted after that. The wife wakes up normally and the husband and daughter greet her happily. They don't tell her anything that happened. Just that there was some issue during the backup, and she has been asleep for three weeks. The man cries with happiness, so the wife smiles and reassures him that she's fine now. Later the wife makes breakfast for the girl again, but since her memories are from before the backup, she did not add fresh cream to the eggs. The girl comes to understand that her mother is here with her, but it's not the same, so she starts crying. Her mother hugs her and her father also joins them in a nice and warm family hug. Back at the prison, after Ayaka asked Hikaru if he was still looking for her, his time was up. As he is leaving, Ayaka promises to see him soon. Hikaru smiles at her and leaves. Later, Hikaru contacts his friend Kaoru to look for anything she can find on backup devices in the black market. Hikaru is doing all this to find out what happened to his mother's copy. Hikaru talks about how technology has been advancing way faster in recent times than they could imagine. From the time man mastered fire, it took several millenniums just to produce steel. After that, it took another few millenniums for the steam engine to be made. Then, it took centuries for nuclear power. And within decades of that, computers can beat humans at chess. But maybe the GOAT Magnus Carlsen was just going easy on the computer? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.